My name is Taslo, and I'm full stack developer at the Camunda BPM runtime team. And I'm very excited to show you Camunda Spring Boot starter today. Um, does this work? No? All right, here we go. Um, so Camunda Spring Boot Starter was initiated in 2015 um, by members of the community. And in 2016, uh, the version 2.0 was released, which aroused great popularity among the Camunda users. And this was why we added it to the official Camunda product stack in 2017, and we released version 3.0. Later this year, we will release version 3.4 together with Camunda BPM 7.12. So before we start off with the workshop, I would like to explain you what a UART actually is. So let's pretend we want to build a process application. It contains um, all the code we write in our IDE. For example, we want to build a backend in Java and a frontend in JavaScript. And um, what it also contains is the process model we built with the Camunda modeler. Um, since we don't want to reinvent the wheel, um, we want to use third-party libraries. So our application is based on third-party libraries. For example, if we want to handle JSON in the back end, we want to use a JSON object mapper, which um, then can be added as a dependency to our project. Um, App plus libraries won't run on its own, so it is highly dependent of a container runtime. Um, a container runtime is usually represented by a Java application server like Tomcat or Wildfly, and it provides a data source um, so that we can connect our process application um, with the database, and also, for example, a web server um, which serves our front end to the user. Um, all these three layers uh, run inside the Java virtual machine. And now let's have a look how um, uh, this um, yeah, Java archive bundling was um, um, happening in the past. So um, app plus libraries layer um, was included in a Java archive file, and this Java archive needed to be deployed on a traditional Java application server. Um, so a Java application server actually um, is not so easy to set up. You need to configure it correctly. You need to maintain it. You need to update it regularly. And this is not a piece of cake to do. So um, this is what a thin jar um, requires you to do. And um, in contrast to the thin jar, the Uber jar has the container runtime already included in the Java archive. This means that we don't need any um, like independent Java application server where we need to deploy the process application on. It is directly built in our Java archive, so it runs just on every machine which has the minimal requirement of a Java installed on this machine, um, which makes things a lot more easier. Um, so now, the question for you guys is um, what is actually, who of you ever used um, Camunda BPM together with um, a traditional Java application server? Could you please raise your hand? All right, so this is quite a lot. And who of you have ever used Camunda Spring Boot Starter? Raise your hands again. All right, so these are less compared to the ones um, who used Camunda together with um, a traditional Java application server. And my last question is, who is already using Camunda Spring Boot Starter in production? All right, nice. This is um, actually more than I expected. And my goal, <laughs> my goal uh, today is um, to equip all of you with the knowledge so that you can go and get your process applications ready for the future with Camunda Spring Boot Starter. And um, I will, to do this, I will guide you through a um, step-by-step guide. Um, we will, uh, I will introduce you to the project structure, then we will connect um, the database um, to, uh, to the Spring project. We will model and execute a workflow. Um, we will customize the Camunda web apps, and we will secure the Camunda REST API. And um, 
I will first um, give you a demonstration of the first um, couple of steps. And after this, you will get some time to repeat these steps on your machine. And um, I will also point you later on to a very detailed step-by-step -step guide, um, which you can follow along. And if you get stuck at some point, don't worry. We have very competent uh, Camunda Springwood starter enthusiasts here in the room, which uh, will help you with all your um, technical problems. Um, just raise data on your hands, and then they will help you with all your problems. All right. Um, now let's get started with um, the demonstration. Um, I will go to my Java IT IDE, and um, I will first walk you through um, the project structure. This is a very um, common Java project, so we have the usual project structure. And um, we have placed an application class here, um, which is located under com, Camunda Con Workshop. And this class is annotated with at Spring Boot application. And we have a main method um, where we call the run method of uh, the Spring application class and pass the... Um, ah, okay, sorry, yeah, for sure I can. Um, is this better now? <laughs> All right. And um, yeah, we pass the um, class reference um, to the run method. Um, as this is a um, Maven project, we have a pom.xml file where I want to especially point your attention at the dependencies section. So in this section, we define all the um, artifacts we want to use later on in our Yuba jar. So um, the first step is um, to remove um, some um, Maven coordinates since we only need them at a later point. So I um, remove this, um, this coordinates and um, now we want to connect the Spring Boot project with a database. And um, to do this, we first need to start a database. Um, in this case, um, I, I have decided to pick um, PostgreSQL, but um, as you might know, Camunda um, provides a very um, broad variety of databases, uh, provides support for these databases. So you, in theory, you could use um, whatever you want, but um, for now, we want to use um, PostgreSQL, and I have decide, uh, uh, defined the JDBC driver right here. Um, I will now open my terminal and um, start up a Docker container with um, Postgres running inside. Um, we need to expose the port to our host machine and reference the um, Postgres M image. And now it is starting um, up and we see that the database system is ready um, to accept connections. So um, the central point um, where we want to configure um, everything related to um, the Spring Boot project is the application.yaml file. And this file uh, is um, this file we need to create now. So I go to source main resources. And in this folder, we create a new file called application.yaml. And here we now want to specify all the database credentials. We need to connect uh, the project to the database. So um, let's add a new section, Spring Data Source. And um, we need to point to the JDBC driver class, which is located under org PostgreSQL DS. Um, PG simple data source. And as a username, we um, specify Postgres and the password is Postgres as well. Um, now it comes to the URL, which is JDBC colon Postgres SQL colon slash slash localhost 5432 Postgres. All right. So um, we want to connect um, to the, so the database is running on our local host, so we want to connect to local host, listen to port 5432, and we want to point to the Postgres database. Yeah, for sure. All right. Um, so this is basically what we need to do to connect uh, the Spring Boot project to the 
um, database. It's very simple. And now we try to just start the whole application. I will go um, to the application class and run the application. And now um, it is started, uh, the project is starting up. Okay. This did not work <laughs> because. Yeah. All right, let's just check the um, the error message, application run. Okay, yeah, this is probably the problem. So let's just rerun the application again. Yeah, and this works. Thanks, Nile. Um, so what is happening now, um, the process engine is bootstrapped and it um, is configured with some sensible default configurations. Um, also, the um, uh, data schema is created uh, inside the database. We can see here um, with the create scripts output, and um, now the job executor waits to acquire new jobs. And uh, to make sure that everything works as expected, let's just go to um, the REST API. Um, is located on the local host and the web server runs on 8080, on port 8080. And um, we open the endpoint to, um, the, to see the engines that are up and running. And we see right now the default engine is up and running. Um, so, to repeat the question again, so everybody can hear it, um, the question was if the schema creation is already production ready, like, um, yeah, so um, if you start from scratch with an absolutely um, empty database, um, then um, Spring Boot takes care of creating all the tables, and um, this is um, absolutely production ready, you can do this. Um, does this answer your question? So if you connect to a database where you already have uh, the Camunda tables present, then we don't create the, the schema because we check if there's al already the schema available. And if this is not the case, we create um, the tables. If it's the case that there are um, tables already present in the database, then they are not created. So the data is preserved. So if I now would re restart the whole application, um, the create scripts are not run another one, uh, another time. Yeah, so um, the question is about migration. I have a bit the feeling that this goes in a direction which is uh, at a very detailed level. Actually, these questions are absolutely fine, um, but maybe it's um, better to ask this um, um, later if we, um, when we, when you got the time um, to repeat the steps and then you can ask a consultant and I'm sure he will answer these questions. All right, um, so let's continue. Um, so what we have um, here now is um, the up and running um, process engine and we try to reach the REST API, which worked perfectly well. And um, now it's your turn to actually um, repeat the steps on your own. Um, as I already said, um, there is a step-by-step -step guide you can find un under camunda.com uh, under github.com slash camundacon um, 2019 slash yuba jar and um, actually uh, if you are on the repository page you can just click on the folder guide and here you will find the very detailed step-by-step -step guide 
Um, and what I'm asking you to do now is um, the entire part one, fundamentals, step zero, adjust the dependencies, step one, connect to a database, and step two, generate the Uber jar and start the application. All right, we'll see you in a bit. All right, so um, don't worry if um, you still need some time. Um, I would now um, do the f a bunch of um, the next steps and um, we can also catch up in the next sli uh, slots um, where we reproduce uh, the steps. So we also have prepared some intermediate solutions, so don't worry, um, we can catch up. Um, all right, so um, what we are doing now is um, modeling and executing uh, a workflow. So um, I will now open Camunda Modeler and create the um, BPM M diagram. And um, we see right here at the canvas that um, the start event um, has already been placed. And if I select it and click on the append task button, I can enter, um, I can enter a name, which is say ahoy, and I change the type of this task to service task. And um, in the properties panel on the right hand side, um, you can select the implementation details. Um, I select delegate expression. So um, now we need to um, enter a delegate expression, which will be the Ahoy service. So Ahoy service is basically a bean um, which we make available later in our spring project, which is called whenever the service task say ahoy is executed. All right, um, let's finish our process by click on the append end event um, button. And um, now we save this um, diagram in our project. We go to source, main, resources, and we just select a name like shipmates workflow and store it under this location. And if we now go into our um, IDE, we see that the um, workflow is already present. And um, what is really cool with the Camunda Spring Boot Starter, um, whenever you place a process definition under the resources folder, um, it is automatically picked up by the workflow engine and deployed. So you don't need to configure um, something additionally, um, it's just directly available. Um, all right, so we have now modeled the process and what's missing is the business logic. So our bean Ahoy service is missing. So let's create a new Java class, um, which I call my beans and it's also located in the package com, Camunda con workshop. And now I will add a new method um, which returns a Java delegate. And um, this method is called um, a hoy service. And in the um, method body, we um, put a lambda expression um, where we um, write something to the console. Um, we want to write um, a hoy ahoy comma and then we um, go to the execution context um, get a variable and resolve the variable with the name my variable um, in the end I add an exclamation mark so it's um, like this we print to the console ahoy, ahoy um, get the variable with the name my variable and exclamation mark all right so this would not work right now because we need to add some um, spring um, specific um, annotations. Um, we need to annotate this class with configuration and we need to uh, make this method a bean definition with a bean annotation. All right, so um, now we have our um, Ahoy um, service bean and we ha have also a process modeled. What we now want to do next is um, to start a new process instance and um, starting a new process instance could be achieved via Java API, via REST API, but um, actually I wanted to um, write a very complex, very complex uh, 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 
front end. So here it is basically you see a form where um, we have an input field, um, text input field, which um, um, takes the process definition key. We have another text input field for the variable, and we have a submit button. And whenever we submit this form, the JavaScript method start process instance is called. Let's have a look at the JavaScript. So um, the process definition key is retrieved from the text input put field process definition key, and um, we perform a REST request um, where we um, um, perform the request against the REST API endpoint to start a new process instance and pass the process definition key. Um, the REST request also has some payload, um, which, we, which is defined here. Um, because we want to create the variable with the name my variable, and we retrieve the value again from the form field, and we also do some um, promise handling. In the error case, we um, show the error message, and if everything works as expected, we show success. All right. Um, now, if uh, to make um, assets available um, via the um, embedded Spring Boot um, web server. Um, we need to add another dependency, um, which makes an automatic lookup for um, static assets and um, makes it available via the web server. So let's go to our pom.xml and add a new dependency in the dependencies section. And um, we want to add Spring Boot starter web with the group ID org spring framework boot. And um, we also need to make sure to re-import the POM XML to our IDE and um, restart the application. All right, now it is um, restarting and we go to Safari and um, open our web server and we want to open the start, start workflow.html file. All right, and here we see our, um, our small uh, front end. <laughs> and um, yeah, now the process definition key is specified in um, the process definition. So if you have nothing select in the selected in the Camunda modeler, you see in the properties panel um, at the, um, at the as a first um, entry, um, the process definition key, which we can just copy and paste here. And um, as variable value, I um, enter shipmates. And now I start this process instance, and we see a model dialog which prints success. And <laughs> what we expect now is that um, Ahoy shipmates um, has been written to the console. So let's again open our IDE and we see, okay, everything was successful. We see the Ahoy shipmates and the service task has been executed. All right, so this was now um, the, the um, next step. Um, now you get again some time to um, reproduce the steps on your own machines and then we will again see in a bit. All right, so the break is over. Um, I hope you enjoyed the break and um, now we will continue with the workshop. Um, just for the people who um, just came in, um, if you go to um, github.com slash kamundacon2019 slash huberja and then you click on the guide section, um, you will find um, in the table of content um, a section intermediate solutions um, which you can use um, to catch up. So if you just bump in or you want to catch up anyways, you can um, download um, the uh, Ahoy Shipmates step one under the advanced topics and then we can just continue um, at this point. All right, so what we will do now is to um, customize the web application. Um, I will go to um, my IDE again, um, we don't need the um, console window right now. Um, so 
Right now, our process application contains um, the uh, REST API, but not the web apps. So what we need to do now is to go to the POM XML file and um, add the Camunda web apps to it. So to, make, uh, to speed things up, I just copy the dependency here and um, paste it um, here, and we need to um, adjust the artifact ID slightly to web app. And um, this should, be, uh, should do the trick. Um, what we also want to do is create an admin user, because um, for the web apps, um, we need to lock. We just open the application YAML file and add camunda bp.bpm dot admin user and then we add ID um, and then we just um, pick an admin username which is for example Captain Jack um, and as password I use um, a secret prey. All right, so um, let's just rebuild the application and start it up and see if we can log into the web apps. I will go to localhost um, 8080 and you can find the web apps under slash app slash. Okay, this did not work. Why? Because um, I did not re-import the POM XML um, in IntelliJ, so I just click the re-import um, button and now rebuild the application again. Now the, applica uh, the um, web application artifact should be um, downloaded and um, used. Let's try this again. Yeah, and now it works. Um, I try to log in with Captain Check and Secret Prey, and we have successfully authenticated ourselves. All right, so now I want to point your attention to Tasklist. Tasklist is a tool um, to, it's like an inbox um, for um, tasks, so whenever um, the process execution reaches a user task, a new task instance is created and the task worker can find them in the um, task list application and can complete task. Um, all our web apps, not only task list, um, has a very interesting functionality which is um, a style sheet which only um, which only um, yeah, is there to um, store all your custom um, user styles. So we have the official Camunda style here, and if you want to customize uh, the look and feel of the web apps, um, for example, because um, we want to brand the whole um, web apps um, for our co company, um, we just can add additional styles um, here, and um, like this change the look and feel of the web apps. Um, what we want to do now is change um, the task list logo and um, change the um, red colors here to blue. Um, to do this, I go to um, the IDE and um, Spring Boot offers a very great um, functionality to override all the um, st static assets um, for the web applications. We just need to place um, the user styles in some um, folder structure and then it overrides the um, actual um, yeah, asset of the application. So you can find it under source main resources, meta inf, and then it's a pretty nested um, structure actually. But um, right here um, we will create a new file um, called userstyles.css and now we can start to define our own style sheets. Um, since um, we want to speed up things, I just um, copy a already prepared um, style sheet here and paste it. And what we do here is we replace the logo and change the colors. I will now rebuild the application and restart it. And we go to task list and if everything has been started up, this is the case, then I reload the page and I reload it again. And now here we are, um, the logo has been replaced with an iron cat and we changed the colors to blue. 
All right, so um, now it's again your turn to um, repeat these steps, um, and we will see in a bit. All right, so <laughs> micro uh, microphone support is in place. So um, I just want to share one question w which was raised, um, and this was, um, can I also customize cockpit or admin um, uh, in exactly the same way, and yes, this is absolutely possible. So we did now um, customize um, task list, but you can exactly in the same way also customize um, cockpit and admin. All right, um, so now I will continue with um, securing the REST API. So let's go back to um, the IDE and um, what we now need to do is adding um, the um, Spring Boot starter security dependency to our POM XML. Um, before we do this, I just want to um, explain you what we actually want to achieve with this. So right now we see that um, our web apps have already authentication in place. So we have a login form here where we need to enter username and password and then can log in. Um, what is not secured right now is uh, the REST API. So if I open a REST API endpoint, we can see the data and we can also perform modifying operations without any authentication. And this is obviously um, not very secure. So um, let's try to get um, to fix this and our goal is to have um, basic authentication for all endpoints um, located under slash rest slash and then basically all the endpoints. But what we not want to have is basic authentication for the web apps. So since the web apps already have their own um, login form, we want to um, not apply it here. Um, all right, let's add another dependency. I copy the Spring Boot um, dependency from here and change it slightly. So it's Spring Boot Starter Security. And um, now I re-import the POM XML file to my IDE. And, um, and when I now go to application YAML, I can define uh, um, the user credentials um, for the REST API. So let's add a new section called Spring Security User. And um, the name is Captain Hook. And the password is rum, as this is the um, favorite uh, drink of Captain Hook, um, as you all know. Um, all right, so when we now re rebuild and re um, restart the application, we should face the following. Um, if we now reload, as soon as the web server has been started up, then we have this um, HTML-based um, login form for the web apps. If we go to the web apps, we have this form, and also for the REST API. And um, this is the default configuration of Spring Boot Starter Security. And now we want to customize this um, to achieve to only have a um, login form for, um, REST, for the REST API and um, not with the HTML-based um, mechanism, but with basic authentication. All right, um, in order to achieve this, um, let's create a new class um, file. Um, I call this my web security config. Um, and this must be annotated with uh, the configuration annotation and we extend um, the um, web security configurer adapter. And um, then we um, override the method to um, configure the HTTP security. And now we can configure the HTTP sec security with a Fluent Builder. So I um, use the object um, of the parameter here. And first, we need to disable CSRF because um, the web apps already come with um, CSRF prevention. And if we would not disable it um, for Spring Boot, it would interfere each other. So the um, Kamunda mechanism would interfere the Spring Boot mechanism. 
And um, now we want to authorize the requests and um, add a regular expression pattern. Um, so all requests um, under slash rest slash and then basically everything should be um, should be have this um, Spring Security Authentication. Then we call the Authenticated method. And what we also want to do is to um, switch the um, form from the form-based um, authentication mechanism to the HTTP basic auth mechanism. All right, this is everything we need to do. Um, let's rebuild and restart the application and wait until um, the web server is running. This is the case now. And if we now go to our web apps, we should see that we again see the Camunda uh, login form. And um, if we want to co go to the REST API, um, we have this model dialog which um, um, asks us to enter our user name and password. So I enter Captain Hook um, and RAM, and we see again uh, the default engine. All right. Um, now you again get some time to repeat these steps, and we will see again in a bit. All right. Um, I hope everybody now um, was able to successfully perform the last step. Um, there is one more thing I wanted to show you. So um, if you now want to get started um, with your own uh, Spring Boot Starter project from scratch, um, you could go to um, startcamunda.com. Um, it's a nice little generator where you can um, define a group ID, the artifact ID, you can select your Camunda version. Um, the Spring Boot version is selected automatically. You can al also select the database of your favor. You can select the um, Java version and um, the modules you want to use in your project. And we can also select the admin user and the admin password. And before we download it, we can um, click on the Explore Project button and go through um, the project and see what we have actually configured. We can check out the um, pom.xml file and the application YAML file. And um, if you are happy with your um, configuration, you can just generate your project and then a zip file is downloaded and this could be the foundation of your um, Spring Boot project. Um, all right, there is another thing. Um, if you enjoyed the talk, um, um, I would ask you to scroll to the very end of the step-by-step -step guide. Um, here is um, some little feedback survey. Um, it's just five questions and I would be very happy if you um, fill it out. Um, and then I will do my closing. All right, so now that you are equipped with all the um, knowledge to get started um, with um, Spring Boot Starter, you should actually um, uh, check out um, the benefits you have from this um, because you can make your process applications independent of a traditional Java application server like Whitefly or Tomcat. Um, it is also very cool to have a runnable process application with minimal upfront configuration. Um, go and use the Camunda as well as the um, Spring Boot uh, modules and um, improve your local development workflow. That's all I have. I hope you enjoyed the talk. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you.